Hello, this is Matthew Randall uh, with another tutorial in match moving. Um, so, in the previous tutorials, we actually uh, tracked uh, some uh, positions. We, we tracked and solved the movement of a camera uh, for a shot uh, using match move and then exported that camera movement in a Maya file. And now, before I open that up, there, has, there was a slight error in the way that I actually exported the um, uh, Maya data. Uh, or, or the, uh, the the actual uh, Maya file from uh, Match Mover. So I'm just going to go back into Match Mover and just go File, Export. And actually, all these options that I clicked off, actually, you want to leave those on. Okay. Uh, we don't need the distortion grid though. And then just go onto Track 2, just go Save. Okay. And then all I've done in Maya is simply set, I went in and set the project to that Maya project file. So I was actually, if you remember, I exported it into an existing Maya project. Um, it, it may be that you're going to start a new Maya project. I just happen to have one that I was already working on uh, for doing some match moving on these shots anyway. Uh, so I'm just going to use that Maya project. Okay. Um, but anyway, either way, uh, uh, I've set that. So I'm going to go, there's Maya project, go set. And when I go file, open, I basically just want to open up uh, so basically, what 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 will happen is the Match Move software has just exported a Maya scene. It hasn't just exported the tracking data. It's just it's it created an entire Maya scene. And all I want to do is simply open up that Maya scene. There we go. All right. So it's given me an entire Maya scene. And what we've got here is we've got the camera, okay, uh, and we've got our the position of all our track points in 3D space, and obviously the image plane as well. Um, and what you'll notice is, for some reason, it's all upside down. Now, that's not too much of a problem because, obviously, when we look through the camera, so if I want to look through the camera, in fact, I, 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 what I will do is just play this animation. If I just play this animation through, you can see it's running a little bit slowly because, obviously, this is in HD, this image sequence, but you can see that the, the camera is actually panning forward. I'm just going to see it from the side here. You can see the, cam the camera is dollying forwards to the position of these points that we've got okay great okay so we can see that we've got that uh, that movement um right if i look in the outliner so if you haven't got the outliner just go windows outliner and that brings up the outliner one of the things i like to do is uh, what you one of the things you want to avoid doing is moving this camera or moving one of the locators or moving this group uh, separately from this camera because as soon as you move this group away from the camera basically you've, you've kind of you, 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 you've ruined that link so you really want to avoid doing that one of the things I like to do is obviously you've got the camera here and this this tracker group is actually all the locators and I want to keep those locked together so a good way of keeping those locked together is literally just to drag that camera into the tracker groups. So that's all one thing. If I select that one group now, I can move that entire thing together. Okay? There are controls there. Uh, as you saw, it's actually brought it in upside down. Okay? So um, what I can do is uh, obviously, if I look through the camera now, if you select camera, uh, sorry, uh, so to look through the camera, I just want to go panels, perspective, and it's RZ camera is the uh, tracking of the camera that's created for the track. Okay, obviously everything's the right way round and 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 looks really good because the camera's upside down. Okay, but obviously, obviously if I want to start creating virtual objects and working with it in Maya, um, it's not going to be so great. The camera being upside down. So now that I've grouped everything together, it's going to be really easy. It's going to be really easy just to turn all this around. If I select the entire group and then obviously just rotate it along the Z axis. So here's the Z axis. I just want to rotate it around the Z axis 180 degrees. Bang. So that's just rotated everything around the Z axis. And you should see all my floor points still line up with the floor. Everything looks good. So I've just got everything the right way around. Okay. Now, first thing I want to do is I want to create the floor, and you'll see that the, that this is looking good because, and you know, I can again just double check the position of my locators. But this is looking really good because my floor points, which uh, I think was uh, 
one was on the floor. In fact, if I look through, uh, I can just look through an elevation. Okay, that's on the floor. That's on the floor. That's on the floor, and that's on the floor. Uh, so all my four four floor points are all actually right on the plane. So it looks like I've got a really good coordinate space out of this. Okay, I'm, I'm quite happy with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create myself a floor. So I'm just going to go uh, uh, create polygon uh, plane and just drag out a floor in front of the camera here. Okay, um, and kind of move this around. And then what I want to do is um, I actually want to look through. I want I want one of these views looking through this camera and then the other view in the perspective view. Okay, so I'm just going to go panels perspective RZ camera and you can see I'm looking through the camera here and uh, what I want to do is uh, just line this floor up so you can see I can just pull this here I don't want to move it up and down because the floors on the actual zero plane so it's actually already uh, level you can see the floors already level with my locators for the floor so that's fine the height of it's fine I just want to position it left and right so there we are I've now got a virtual floor there the next thing I want to do is, and if you want to see that properly, I can just go uh, flat shade it. There we go. And you can see if we play this through. Let's just move the animation. You can see that sticking really nicely. I'm happy with that. That's looking good. Okay. So that's our floor. That's sticking with where the floor should be. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to go uh, flip back to uh, wireframe mode now. Um, next thing I want to do is create this... Uh, table so we know the tables on the floor so what we can do now we've got this floor I know the tables on the floor and I can kind of just create a table and put it onto this floor here okay so I'm gonna go and go create polygon cube I've got to sort of drag a base here drag it up okay and what I can then do is go into my polygon cube and then I've measured the table, so I know what height this, this table should be. So I know that the width should be 0.75, uh, like we determined when we uh, set our scale. Okay. Um, uh, the uh, height of the table should be uh, 0.71, and the depth of the table should be 0.55. Okay. So that's kind of representing what we should have for our table. Now what we can do is we can work out where the locators were for that table. In fact, what's kind of quite useful is if I flip back to here and just go back into the 2D view, you'll see that the track markers for the, each corner of this table is track mark 6 and 5. And I can go back into uh, Maya and you'll see if I select track mark 5 and 6, there they are. Okay. So what I can do is uh, if I just go into my first of all, I just want to go into my side elevation, just make sure that this table, this cube, is lying perfectly on the floor here. Uh, again, it's useful selecting stuff in this outline. So I'm going to select the cube here, and I can just place that exactly onto this floor here. That's great. So that cube's now on the floor. Uh, now, what I want to do is go into this perspective view and select six. And five, so there we are, that's six and five, and you can see that's roughly about right. That's what we would expect to see. As I'm just going to move my view round here a little bit, and then going to select. I don't want to move the locator again. If I just move this locator, that's going to ruin what I'm doing. I want to move the cube, okay? So uh, just check which locator I'm lining up with. That's six and five, okay? So I want to line this corner up with that locator, all right. I want to line up the top corner with that locator, and notice how it lines up. So now, the because you know this Q is the exact size, uh, it's the exact distance that we said those two points were uh, when we tracked it when we created the coordinate space. You can see that by putting the same measurements in now, I'm 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 physically able to model things to the correct scale as well, very easily. So that's mark six is on one corner, five is on the other corner. Okay, now if I look through the camera, you can see that this is really, you know, this, this cube is, is almost spot on where we'd expect this table to be. We could refine this a little bit. In fact, I think we could actually just simply move it up a little bit, uh, and that looks really spot on. 
so maybe that we just need this to be a little bit the height isn't quite right when we measured it possibly okay um, to get a better idea of what this is going to look like so if I go in here and I go uh, um, uh, sorry, flat shade all, there we go. Um, obviously, I can't see the objects that I'm matching to. So a good thing to do is go X-ray, and you can kind of get a better idea there. Another thing you can do as well is just create a... Uh, is, is to just apply like a checkerboard material to it. So quite often I'll do that. So I'll go right-click here, and I'm going to go assign new material. I'm going to... it's going to be a Lambert, okay? And then what I'm going to do is with this Lambert material that we've just created here, I'm going to apply uh, the colour of it, rather than just being the default grey, I'm going to apply a checkerboard material to it. So I'm going to select checkerboard. Okay, and you can see we've got a checkerboard going on here. And then what I want to do is uh, I want to repeat the pattern. Let's have a look. Uh, offset. I always forget where to find this repeat pattern bit. I think it might be on. Uh, is it on the Lambert? Let me just check that I've actually got the checkerboard in there now. Uh, so I'm going to just turn off this X ray. In fact, it hasn't really applied the checkerboard pattern at all, has it? Let's try that again. Sign. If I sign Lambert 2 to it, that's not what I was expecting. Let's have a look. Hmm. I'm just going to create. I'll start again. Let's do a new material. Sign new material. Lambert. Obviously, it's created Lambert 3 now. Uh, ah, I know what I've done wrong. There you are. I'm going to go back to sign existing material, Lambert 2. What I didn't do was go uh, view hardware texturing. That's the bit that I kind of forgot to do there okay now what I want to do is uh, I want to uh, select this okay with Lambert 2 material selected I want to uh, go into this material here uh, and I think yeah repeat UV I think that's right. I want to set that to 8. There we go. That's what I want to do. And you can kind of change the density of the checker pattern. Then what I can do is do a similar thing. So I can select the uh, floor. Okay, so this plane here. I'm going to select the plane here and go assign uh, existing material. Just assign the Lambert 2 to it. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is select X-ray. So it's all kind of X-rayed now. So you can kind of see through it. Uh, and see the checkerboard. And this should give you a real idea of how this is matching up. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is just do a play blast. So I'm just going to finish up with a play blast here. And what you should see is we've got a really well matched scene, and we're now able to create virtual objects that really stick well to this shot. Okay, let's give it a moment to kind of render out this play blast for us. Uh, my poor computer is doing a lot, it's recording it and it's rendering it at the same time. Uh, so give it a moment. And it is doing it all in HD as well, so that's reasonably challenging. But you can see as it's rendering it out, it looks pretty accurate, the stick. And uh, you know, I I'm always quite impressed with this software in terms of the results that you do get from it. Here we go. There we go. So that's our movement there. And I, I'm I'm really happy with the results of that. So you can see that our our, our uh, 3D objects really are sticking perfectly well to this. And now I can start adding things to my scene, and it really really will glue well. Okay.